In today's show, I'm going to talk about the Power Apps Flexible Height Gallery. So the Flexible Height Gallery has some dynamic sizing, right? So each row or template or whatever you want to call those little slices are, every one of them can have a different height based on the content inside of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to use it, and then we're going to look at three different examples of more complex scenarios as you start to understand how it works, how you can really make it dynamic for each and every uh, you know activity. Should be fun. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to talk about the Power Apps Flexible Height Gallery. And the reason we're going to dive into this control is because, you know, galleries sometimes they're just simple, right? We just want to throw a couple easy things on there. Yay! But a lot of times you get into scenarios where, like, hey, I want to expand the data. So maybe I've got some parent child relationship data and I want to be able to drill into the children right there in the context of the gallery. Or I want to expand out like a list of skills or something else that is going to take a lot of height for some people and just a little bit, right? People like Chewy who have very few skills. Then we're going to be able to control that with some buttons inside the Flexible Height Gallery. Now, I will warn you going into this, one of the things that I've never loved about it is it has some magic, right? One of the things I teach in my training classes like university, go check that out. Um, we talk a lot about, you know, Power Apps isn't magic. There isn't hot, hidden code. There isn't compiled code. Everything it does is right there in front of you. Well, one of the things that the Flexible Height Gallery does, it is kind of magic. It is hidden from you. And so to that end, you know, that's why I've always kind of avoided it. But that's all right. Today, we're going to dive into those examples and then show you how to get started building with it. All right. Enough of the blah, blah, blah. Let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right. So let's start with a demo of why you care about this, right? So the idea of a flexible height gallery is you can have it dynamically resized based on the amount of space that a given template or row in your gallery uses. So here you can see that we've got like Nicola's record. And if I expand out her skills, it takes up more room. If I collapse them, it goes back in. Let's expand again. And it even works row by row, right? So if we go down here to mine, then you can see that even though my row is giant, and Greg's row is tiny, they're all just taking up the exact amount of space they need. And so that's the beauty of the Flexible Height Gallery. It's one of the few things in Power Apps that is magic, right? Once we show you how to configure it, basically Power Apps is auto-calculating how tall each one of those rows or templates should be. So we're not going to write a formula for that. Unlike everything else in life where I feel like we have to write the formula to do it. So there's one example, a very simple one, where we're just kind of toggling this. We'll talk about how that works. If we go over here, so this is one that goes a little bit further and we'll show this one at the very end. But the idea of this one is I wanted to both be able to expand. So if we go in here to here, oh, and what we're seeing here is that this is two related tables. So the gallery itself is showing my expense items. And then the um, over here, this is a child gallery that is embedded inside of there. And so that gallery is showing us the uh, the related, the children items from that parent list. So it's actually nested galleries here. And then, you know, obviously we can just kind of toggle these up and down. Um, my buddy Mark actually made the first version of this that I ever saw. I was like, eh, that's interesting. Now it's a video. And so I can also down here, I can say expand all and they all jump out or I can collapse all. So, but this one is a little bit more tricky because this one requires your data source to have a column that you can toggle. So we'll talk about that at the very end. And then one other example here, um, this one, I think all we're doing, it's the same type of thing. I just used, um, what do you call those things? Toggles in order to do the same effect. Not because I don't think you'd ever build a gallery with a toggle, but I'm really just, it's kind of my, you know, my ever never ending quest to get the light bulb to come on how that works. And in this particular one, what's happening is the toggle is just controlling the visible property of this gallery. And so when this gallery becomes visible, it says how much space do you need gallery? It says I need this much space. And so then the row grows. When we change the visible to false, then the gallery is not shown. And so then the row is just showing its minimum size there. So that's how those work. All right, so let's build a little of this ourselves, right? And remember, if you're just interested, if you just want to go steal any of the stuff I just showed there, you can go over to training.powerapps911.com. You can sign up for our curated library and you can download this video and this app and just get all the working pieces and not have to overdo it. All right. 
So let's add a new screen. So to start to get a flexible gallery, you just go to insert and then gallery. And then forever we've used the verticals. I don't even know if I probably once or twice I've used horizontal. And then now we have the flexible. So when you add the flexible, the first thing you want to do, right, you do want to choose the one with sample data because it's going to make more sense, at least as you're wrapping your head around it, because you want to reverse engineer what they did, right? If you don't remember how this works, you should be able to drop one of theirs on and then kind of work your way through it again. And so here we're just going to add our good friends, the employees. And so, A, that is a super zoom uh, shot of Nicola. She'd probably be angry if she saw this, but she won't watch the video, so we're okay. Um, but so the layout by default here is a social, right? So over here on the right layout, a social feed. Change the news feed. I think it's a little bit closer to what you're going to want to build from. So then that will let you start to do this. All right. And so when you're looking at a flexible gallery, as you can see right now, we just simply add it. They're all the same size. And that is because none of them need extra room. So if we click in here, we're going to see that the CEO, right? The title label here is just a regular label. Nothing different than you've ever done before. This second label though, the body label, if you look over on the right, it has the auto height setting to on. So the idea here is that whatever field you're showing, so maybe we're showing department, not that it really matters, none of them are big, but whatever field you are showing, however much space that field needs to render is how it's going to decide what to show you. All right, so that's, or sorry, what size it's going to be. That, so this body two field in their template is what's driving it. Now we're going to make it start from a blank in a second. We're going to see if we can drive it any way we want. But in this example, body two drives it. So the bigger body two gets, the larger it's going to be. And so to that end, one of the examples we saw a minute ago was um, the, the skills going up and down. So let's kind of reset that up. So first I'm going to make their pictures smaller. Because the way that the auto height really works here is it is driven on whatever the furthest down control is, right? So whatever needs the most room, that's what's going to set the template height. Um, so to that end, like if we were to go in here and just say, hey, let's just add an icon real quick. We'll add the pencil. It really doesn't matter. And so if I take the pencil icon and I say, you know what, pencil, your Y property, remember that's the number that changes as you move up and down. So if I change its Y property to 400 and then we go out of there. Now this looks really weird in the studio experience. Um, but what will happen when you hit play is that look, the pencil is right above Greg's record. And if we go down here, this pencil is above mine. And so this gallery, even though it's template height, right? It's, it's current size is only this. When it renders, it says, oh, the pencil wants to be way down here. And so it automatically makes the row that big, right? It is driving the behavior. Now you might be noticing, but Shane, the uh, separator there was kind of a weird spot, right? So the separator, you are right, it is not at the bottom. And if we go look, the reason for that is the separator's Y property is actually just tied to either the size of the templates, minus one, or wherever body is. So in their little layout that they built, the, the, the rectangle or the separator line here is tied to just basically being underneath our friend um, body two, which was that auto adjusting label. So the, the rectangle uh, or the separator here, I think it makes it confusing when you're first starting. So what I found was easier is I'm gonna delete the separator because it, it weirds me out. Now, if we do this now, we can kind of see it, but I, but I can't really see where these break. So then just use another little trick of your galleries and let's go over here. And so your galleries, you're gonna have a template padding on the far right. It might be right under my head, right above it. I don't know. And then if we do like a 10, now they're all done by 10. Now you can't really see it. So then what you wanna do is just set your template fill here. Uh, let's just set them all to one of the grays. So then now when we hit play, look, you can see that Nicola's is way down here because the pencil pushed it down here and they're all in that same spot. If we get rid of the pencil, we just simply delete it. Now, if we hit play, now they're all sitting there with the image, right? Because the image is the lowest thing. So that's what's driving the behavior. So now that we've kind of seen that, now if we go back to our label here, so remember, um, if you've never used it before, there's a function called concat. So concat takes a table of data. And so what I've done is I have a field called this item.skills, 
which is a multi-select choice field, which returns a table. And I'm gonna say, hey, for that table, show me the value. And then for every row, I want you to concatenate in a char 13. So character 13 is a way of doing a line break. So now you can see that each person's skills are in their own line. Now if you hit play, now look, puzzles kind of bottoms the colas, eating bottoms mine out, puzzles for me, but you can see that we all have different rows because we're all just showing our individual skills. And since we're showing our individual skills uh, dynamically, the, this field's auto-sizing. When this field auto-sizes, the template keeps up. Remember, your template size here, right? So your template size of like your default template size we usually set, this one doesn't really matter. Like if I drag it way down here and we hit play, it still just all collapses the way it's supposed to. But one of the tricks to making your editing experience easier is by moving this thing around. Also think about this template fill as the, the minimum size. All right, so if we go way up here and we say play, you know, we're still, it's still all good. So, but then that makes like the editing experience really awkward. So I have been just finding myself making this really big while I'm editing and then putting it where I want before I preview or, or before I like publish and call it a day. Okay. So there you go. So now we are seeing a little bit of how this works, right? It's really just determined by what goes here. And so, for example, if we want to insert another label, so another label here, and in this label, we're just going to put their first name. Now, right now, if I do this, you can see that it's kind of just hung up. It's underneath my name or like it's underneath my skills. It's kind of hanging down for everybody else. Right? I have all the skills. It's important to understand. I have nunchuck skills. So, and um, that's an office reference anyway. So what you'd want to do is if you really wanted to have their first name under their skills, what would you do? You need to dynamically set the Y of this. So the same way that they were just setting the rectangle that we deleted because it was bothering me. Now, if I want to have this label float, I would say, all right, you are. So what do we got? We got body two. Oh, I got to spell it right. Body two is Y. So that's the Y of that label above us. Plus body two's height plus five. So we get a little spacing. So now, look, Nicola's name's right here. Greg's name is here. My name is way down here. And so we've made that field dynamic. And because it's the bottom most thing, the template already automatically expanded to, uh, to show that. Okay. So you can make this and add as much stuff here as you want and it will just adapt. It's, it, it's, it's magic. It's one of the few things that just magically works in power apps. Okay. So now let's talk a little bit. I'm going to shrink this up a little bit. Let's say that you didn't want to show those skills. Right? Or you want to do like that little toggly flip that we were doing. So the easiest thing we're going to do is we're going to do an input and we're going to do a checkbox right now. What we're really after here is the true and false. That's, that's actually what we're after. So we're just going to delete the text. We don't want that. But what I want is when they click on this checkbox, I'm going to show or hide this. So if we go here and let's put it way up at the top so it doesn't affect any of the sizing. So we could go here and say, hey, you, you are visible, right? You're visible is what? Your visible is tied to that checkbox. So it's called checkbox one, checkbox one dot value. So if the checkbox is not checked, it doesn't show up. If it is, it does. So if we hit play now, we can kind of toggle these in and out. But we're not getting our sizing, right? And this was one of those things that I didn't like when I first started playing with it. And, you know, and it works the same for each. And the, and the idea is that there's a checkbox in every template or every row. So then this is controlling each person's individually, right? So that kind of works, but it wasn't exactly what you wanted because you actually wanted this thing to, right, show and hide and disappear. Or sorry, to kind of collapse and go. So what I ended up doing was instead of saying checkbox value visible, I said true for this. So now they all just show again. And then I ended up going to my text property and saying, hey, if checkbox one dot value, so if that is true, then what do I want to show? I want to show their skills just like we are. If that is not true, then I want to just show click to expand. 
I, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Whoop. Okay, so now if we say play, and now we get rid of Nicola's, look, it collapses and it says click to expand. Press it, they show up, right? Same for mine, right? Mine's easy to see because it's so big. I have all the skills. And you can see that we're getting that experience, right? So there's your toggle experience. It, and for me, it was a, in this particular scenario, it's about changing the text in here to adapt to what you want to say. Still with me? Good. All right. So then now the next thing you might be thinking is, well, I want this, but it's kind of weird that there's like this floating checkbox, right? So what you might do, so you could come over here and you could put the checkbox here and I'm going to kind of stretch it. Now notice that I am resizing um, the control and so I don't want to make it too big because then it would do all that. So I'm going to kind of put it up here at the top and then I'm going to make sure it is on top. And so now if we check, look, so if I say click to expand, it looks like I am clicking on the uh, the text. In reality, is and because right now I have the border showing, you can see that the border right of all of the size, anywhere I do inside here is going to click it. So now that I understand that, now, well, housekeeping, I could go back to this and say, you know what, your border color, where's your border color? Border color, we're gonna change your border color to be transparent. My favorite color. Did you know they made that for me? They did. I asked. They made it. That's very kind of Greg. And so look, now you don't see that weird box anymore, but we can kind of click to expand. Right? Kind of fun. Now, I also, you noticed in the video, or when we went to this one, all right, so we're doing the same thing. And because I've got the border turned on right now, you can see that it's really that checkbox. But I have the little eye symbol here. So how did I do that? So the key to that is that I'm going to now take this, uh, or I'm gonna throw an icon here. So icon, we'll do the add icon, and then I'm going to just use a little search over here and be like uh, show, or no, view, is it view? There it is, view. I'm gonna shrink it up a whole bunch, tiny right like that. All right, so about there. And so now that I'm happy that it's there, I'm going to take the checkbox and say, all right, checkbox, you also have a check uh, checkbox border color. We're going to set that to be transparent. And then finally for my checkbox, we're going to say, hey, your checkmark, checkbox feel, fill is transparent. Let's see, did I get rid of them all? Nope, still missing something. Uh, oh, make sure you got the checkbox selected. Uh, let's see, we'll make color transparent. Basically, I just start making all the colors transparent until I find the right one. I missed, I missed the key one up here. I did the border color. Checkbox background fill, there it is. That's the one I missed. So now look, so now the checkbox is still here. You can't see it, okay? Now, and it's a big difference. You don't wanna make it invisible. If you make it invisible, then you can't interact with it. But if you make it visible but transparent, they don't realize they're interacting with it. You don't see it. And so the last thing you want to do here, um, well, actually, I want to make sure that the checkbox is above the icon. So I'm going to go here and say, a line, a reorder, bring to front. And then I'm going to go to the icon. And so the icon has an icon property right here. And so for the icon property, what are we going to do? We're going to say, if checkbox one dot value. So if, if it's true, so if it's true, then we want to use the hide, right? So we'd say icon dot hide. And if not, we'd want to use icon dot view. And so now if we say play, we see the little uh, hide button. If we press the hide, we can say click to expand. And so we have this ability to toggle and it's changing not only what you see, but the size of the control so it all looks perfect. Yes! That is the magic of the template fill, right? A little bit of a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then we're able to build that experience that we want. And right, my users don't have to understand all the mechanics underneath here. And you could change, you know, if you don't like the words click to expand, like I think in this one, you know, here what I did was I actually switched it out. Let me show you. So I wanted to be able to do bolds and underlines. 
And so here I got rid of the, uh, the label and I put in an HTML control and then set the HTML control to auto height, right? So you're not like, like, don't be afraid to think outside the box. So, because I want mine to look a little nicer and you can see that, look, it always says skills. And it just says, Hey, if the checkbox is checked, which is hiding underneath here, if it's checked, then we want to do a line break. And then we want to start doing that can cat to show their skills with a line break between each. If it's unchecked, then we show the dot, dot, dot. And that's why we have this very nice looking little visual. If I do say so myself, who says they only build ugly things. I do. Anyway, so that is how I built that one. Now the other two, we will not go into as much detail, but I want to kind of give you an overview of these real quick. And so in this particular one, I did nested galleries, right? So this first gallery here is exactly what you'd expect. And uh, right, it just has normal items. It's sorted, but you don't care. But inside the gallery is another gallery. And so that one is filtering the details list by its parent here, okay? So then I just said, hey, you, that gallery, I want you that height, right? And it is a normal gallery. It is not a uh, flexible height. It could be, it, is, it isn't, it didn't need to be. And so for the height of that one, I said, hey, I always want it to have a, uh, to show everything, right? So we got count rows, self all items. So how many rows of data are coming back and then multiplying it by the template height. And that's how it is getting itself to the perfect size without scroll bars. If you wanted scroll bars, you could have a min, a max here. You know, you can mess around with it, but I just wanted to show. And then um, I also then just said, hey, for your visible property, toggle to dot value. So it, I did use the visible property in this case because I'm not trying to show anything over there. Right? I either want it to be gone or there. But now you can see like the row is super small. And then if we press this, we get what we want back. So just don't have anything tied to the bottom of it or you'd have that same floating problem that we had on the, the previous example. But this is what I'm doing. And I used a toggle here just to remind you, right? All we really want is a way to know, is it yes or is it no? Now your first inclination is, well, Shane, why wouldn't I just do that with a variable? The reason is because a variable would affect all the rows, right? You can't say there's just a variable for a particular row. You can't say this item dot variable. So that's the reason I couldn't use a variable to drive this behavior. But Shane, I want to be able to drive the behavior better. I don't like your toggles. That's great. So that is where we go to this screen. So in this particular example, right, it's very similar as far as when I press this arrow, we get all of them. So we're setting the visible property and then we undo it here, right? And so this is the same checkbox idea. No, it's not. What this is, if we look, is we are actually using the arrow to patch the thing. So the items property for this particular one has to be a data source that has a field that you can change. Okay. So in my case, I just put it in a collection. If you want to go to your SharePoint list or Dataverse table and add a field that just said toggle control, you could do that. And then you wouldn't have to use a collection. But the key is that if we look at the child gallery, it's view or, or it's visible is tied to this item show details column. And if we look back over here, this was patching the collection, right? Which is showing the collection, this item, the current row show details column to be the opposite of what it was, right? The not. So if you want to have the, like a, the grouping control here, then you're going to have to have a data source that you can edit because each row has to be unique. And so collections easiest way to go, but then you might have delegation challenges and things like that. But the beauty of this now is if I want to show all of them, we can say expand all down here at the bottom. And what does expand all do? It doesn't update if, so think of this as like a patch all the records in that collection where it's true. So patch every record. That's what that really says. Patch every record in the collection and then set the show details column to true. So by patching all the records, then all of a sudden they all render, right? So we press expand all and they all get patched and they all render out. And then hopefully what you can guess is collapse all does the exact opposite, right? Update all of the records. So update if uh, collection parent is true, which means update all and then show details is false. And so then that is updating my data source and setting them to false. So 
The key though was that all the data right here, we just put them into a collection. We had to pull in all the data first. Um, if I was willing to go edit the data source, right? So if I went to the expense master list and added a column called toggle control, then I could have just, uh, I could patch the data source directly. But then if I had two or three or 10 users in there at the same time, they'd all be affecting what each other said or saw because they'd all be patching the column back and forth. So it'd probably create a really weird experience, but technically it would work. So there you go. So that is the flexible height gallery, right? There, there's a lot of really cool stuff that it does. I, I think it's, uh, it has a place. I'm always a little weirded out because it does its own magical calculations behind the scene. And so that's why I've always been a little standoffish with it. But when you wanna do scenarios like this, it is definitely the way to go. So um, I guess the only other thing I'll mention over here, like we didn't really talk about it, but if you do a new and a blank here, and then you do a the gallery as well, flexible height. Um, and so then if you set this to blank and then set it to you know employees again. So it's blank and now you would just need to build out your experience, right? You would have to start piecing it all in there, but you could, you know, you could have multiple collapsing things on top of each other that render based on the other one, right? Like all of the things that we showed worked well. But if you're just getting started, I would really just tell you to start with their social feed. If you don't want the picture, just delete the picture, right? And then it gets angry. You're like, why are you angry? The width is tied to something, something, something. I don't know. I'd say, you know what? Width of, oh, that's the width of that control. So we just say the width of that one's now 100. Oh, that's probably too big. We want like 250. And so look, boom, we've gotten rid of theirs. And now we just have a bunch of labels over there we can do our thing with. So start with the news feed in the beginning, but you can build it from scratch. It just requires you to think of all the pieces and sometimes having some pieces there to delete, update, and edit makes your life a little easier. And there you go. That's everything we've got for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. This is one of those controls, like I said, I've avoided for a long time. I don't know what made me decide today was the day to do it, but I did. So if you have any questions, comments, other cool things you've done with this particular control, leave them below. I try to read all the comments that I can and reply to as many as well. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything we've got for today. So I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 91. We do big projects, little projects. We do training, we do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do, then just click on the playlist above. Cool. Thanks and have a great day.